So I'm here as usual. Uh, hi, today I, I thought I would talk about in this vlog uh, something I battle as a teacher is balancing uh, creative constraints, how many boundaries to provide for my students, and how much freedom to give my students so they can really articulate their own vision of what art is and what it can be. So as I said, I'm, I'm wanting to talk about creative constraints today. And I'm obviously here before school and there's no students and I can think about the students that will inhabit the space. Uh, I have anywhere between, I have a small class, uh, about 20, 25 students uh, that is an advanced class, but most of my class is around 35 or 40 students. And so that creates some uh, constraints on my time and, and ability to help navigate students individually in their own uh, their own vision of art and so I have to set some uh, constraints or some boundaries, some, some parameters for their, their uh, journey in the classroom and that's always a, a challenge for me. What we all want is I think as teachers is to have students engaged in their own creative process and uh, achieving that's uh, been an ongoing battle and uh, I'm, always, I'm always adjusting that with the different projects I come up with. I'm trying to elicit a response in them that is personal and uh, help them to be interested in their artistic endeavors. What, what is the right balance when you strike for how much uh, constraints or boundaries you put, uh, timelines, material use, size, uh, maybe even subject matter. It depends on the assignment that I'm working with. Speaking of artistic constraints, here are uh, some work I've just pulled down from a student curated show. The constraint that uh, five of my students who wrote a proposal for this show came up with was a common size and also a common use of one color. They wanted all these to have something I've called a mother color. Uh, and in this case, it was the color yellow ochre. Here behind me are some works that I'm uh, having students enter into an all-state high school show at the Springville Museum of Art. And what I like about the exhibit is that it's all individual visions, hopefully. Sometimes you'll see uh, works that are from obviously a class assignment and, and that is not as interesting to me as having students choose the subject matter, the size, the material, and the approach. But as a teacher, how do I strike a balance? Uh, right here in front of me is a still life I'm having students do uh, in my advanced classes because I see the need for them to reinforce again the idea of composition and uh, some fundamental observational skills that uh, I see that they're struggling with uh, collectively as a class. You know, what I do in my studio practice in, in engaging in personal pursuits or something that I can help that energy and that passion can help uh, spill over into a classroom setting, no matter the constraints that I set for my students. Um, and some of those are just pragmatic and constraints with uh, getting materials out, uh, acrylic or, or oil paint or printmaking. It makes sense with the classroom of 35 to 40 students to have a common material to work with. Sometimes that's just what I have to work with. The advanced students, it's less of an issue, but with the intermediate and beginning students, it's just a pragmatic uh, thing. How, how do I balance uh, juggling, helping students to acquire skill and knowledge and still be able to clean up and, and uh, uh, work with the materials that I have in front of me. So something you think about, hopefully you'll post some of your thoughts and some approaches. This is clearly something for our art educators, not so much a studio practice uh, vlog today. One of the things I'm gonna be talking about in the future is how our environment and the space in which we inhabit impacts our creative process. Stay tuned.